Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are going to be playing the special Azorius style wombo combo deck. It is technically four color if you want to be a stickler about it, but it is two color. It is Azorius. Rakdos joins up. We have zero ways to cast this. We only want it in the graveyard to bring back with our awakening here and have hulking metamorph in the graveyard as well what have we changed to make sure that we're good and a lot of these decks have had to do this some decks are playing cards like get lost or something similar to that just a two mana spot removal to help them stay alive or they're running some type of counter spell to help them especially as sometimes graveyard hate becomes a priority in best ones for example like tranquil frill backs of things some rest in pieces show up just because of the land deck as well but our game plan is to stick pretty much to the same strategy, but add a couple of cards. I believe we trimmed down on a couple of lands to fit this in. But we are at two temporary lockdowns when this enters the battlefield. We exile anything with two or less, and it goes under lockdown. This helps us against Convoke or any kind of go wide, like Simic Food or something like that. If that deck decides it wants to pop up again, this helps us out a ton there. And Revelry for any matchup that's playing just kind of like those really strong two mana creatures like a bloodthirsty adversary or something similar like that. So we can make creatures to get in the way. They don't have trample. It's very nice. And then we'll also gain that for life and draw a card if we have less. But other than that, how does this combo work? Well, it'll be very apparent and it's actually a lot easier to see it work in play than it is to explain it. But basically we have Abuelo's Awakening here. We return a non-aura enchantment, which is Rakdos joins up. And the main thing that this Awakening does is it converts it into a creature. That is a very important step of it. Rakdos joins up, enters the battlefield, now being a 1-1 creature because of this Awakening. All these, these two pieces have to be in the graveyard, by the way. But this says, when it enters the battlefield, it reanimates a creature from the graveyard. That part's important, but let's get to the bottom part and how the damage appears. Whenever a legendary creature you control dies, it deals damage equal to that creature's power to target opponent. So the best creature and the reason this ends up working is because of Hulking Metamorph. Whenever this enters the battlefield, it can copy an artifact or a creature. Notice it cannot copy an enchantment, but thanks to the awakening that this Rakdos joins up is now a creature. So it is a legal target for the Metamorph to copy. And what will happen is Metamorph's name will turn into Rakdos Joins Up while also being legendary. So we'll be forced to pick one of these two to keep. Based on the legendary rule, we'll keep the original Rakdos Joins Up. And because this enters the battlefield as this, another reanimate will go onto the stack. Constantly bringing back the hulking Metamorph and returning itself to the battlefield. Constantly copying the Rakdos Joins Up until we choose to stop it as hulking metamorph is a may ability you don't have to copy so you can do this a million times in paper you're like i'm going to do this a million times you'll take a million damage and then when the hulk metamorph will enter for the last time i will just choose not to copy and then your opponent is dead so it's very cool outside of that let's go ahead and hop in the games see how they go okay i think keeping this makes sense i play this on turn three to be honest no Playing it on turn one makes sense because you get to tap mana out of the way. We got a lot of th things that are going on in our hand that are good. So I would prefer to do those. For example, like casting otherworldly gaze. Is it ninjas? I have to imagine it is. Makes me just want to put archaeologists in play. Now nah, they're gonna hit me anyway, so it's not like it changes anything. But we get the mill and then put the card in our hand. Now we just need another piece. We have plenty of looks, just whether or not we find them. Beating hope. I help my game plan. Figure, just you know, I figured I'd ask. Oh, uh, maybe you would uh, consider doing so. Play another one here. Did I grab it back? We do have one of the pieces in play. We just need to get to the others. 
They have two flyers that I can't block. So if they want to ninjutsu them in, they can. Not really a whole lot I can do. Making a decision here. Sure. Hit to make a treasure, right? And then they pass. That'd be it. Pass it up. Now we can block this. Sure. And then land works out well for them. It happens. Actually, kind of wanting to keep one of these so I can just play it as a 3 3, but maybe I'm not supposed to. Cast this one instead. Top of the library manipulation. Finding another one's actually good. It kind of gives me priority to just go ahead and slam it here. Knowing that I'll most likely survive the next turn as well. Even if they do hit a counter spell here. Yep. Not enough to pay for the draw, so they have to kind of get another one naturally. Definitely could. Revelry is also good. We can then make more threats if need be. What's the plan here? They've been keeping this open the entire time, but they have to keep three mana open for that. block here we're gonna make more treasures let's see they even take a temporary lockdown at this point to be honest the two treasures they make because they have the same one yeah now they can play both of their things out are these three mana they are they choose not to play both of those out Look, looking for a lockdown to kind of eat all this here. In turn. And like double block here on these thieves. Constantly buying turns. It's pretty obvious they have the counter spell again. Not much of a hidden message behind that. Sure. In life total, the sun blockable can't do anything about it. Sure, man. I would like to read the card. Whenever it deals damage to a player, you may put an artifact or maybe. Ah, uh, dude. Sure. Solve all this. Um. Don't. Won't be able to pay for a counter spell anyway. Maybe it'll work. Who knows? 
No way, right? They just didn't have it. That's insane. I just figured they would have it. But it doesn't matter. I'll just click whatever. Okay. Wow. Um, that kind of blows my mind. I thought they were making like every measure possible to ensure that they had extra mana open to like counter it and then play around like a counter spell or something or be able to pay for like a make this appear but instead they're like i'm gonna represent it hope they don't do it we did it because our sunset revelry pretty much snapped resolved and we get there there's first we have veil land other worldly gaze we have creature yeah definitely think i lead off with surveil land play the archaeologist depending on the matchup if not we just third path land on top is great even though it is a ping land and we have boris mana revealed here oh well we could be dead so we have to play the blocker i decline that actually helps a little because we get a little bit extra toughness here we know counter spells are not going to be in their wheelhouse. Yes. Definitely blocking. I'm not falling for just you monsters raising that and hitting me for 15. I'm good. It's like 10, but when we take, still take a ton in the exchange. They do like nothing here gonna be a protection spell we have in a boiler so we need to we survive a turn here so we put actually I have to do a lot here we need draw the mending cast mending and have both of these stick around right this is exactly how we need it tough tough looks pain Dude, it's already just six damage. I'm not entirely sure we can. I feel like I have to play this. Well, I mean. Then it still does two damage. Holy dude. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. You deal 12. Most likely. Maybe they won't commit because I have open mana. Really? No shot, dude. No way that we win this game. Yeah, sure. I've never seen a virtuoso in play on turn two not get answered and just me not be dead, you know? This is wild. Keep this one. Double trigger up. Just one more time. Oh, definitely almost messed that up. <laughs> uh, good thing is exactly 20. Uh, decline. <laughs> I just clicked one because I was like, oh yeah, that's lethal. It'll be hitting for like 20 some. <laughs> Oopsie. But we still get there regardless. It's not like they had a way to gain life with no mana open or anything. It was fine. We didn't punt it too bad. It's okay. What goes first? This is our hand. And it's kind of dicey, but also like fine at the same time. It's like weird. When you have all the pieces, you're like... I don't know if I want to keep a hand with all the pieces because you need a faithful mending. But if we draw a faithful mending, then we have everything. So it just gives us way more options. But then there's less options if, you know, we go into our graveyard. Or to get them in our graveyard is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. Update. Hit very well. And we didn't mill over a land, which is actually kind of important here. Because we need to draw said lands at this present moment. Vampire. 
curious to see what we got going on. They're turning up the pressure. Deep cavern bat, probably. Never mind, blood type harvester. Honestly, if we get the chance, almost just playing one of these is a 3 3. If we do draw an additional copy, is actually probably worth it. Oh, number one. We want some faithful mending. So one of these can go, one of these can go. Ganjo, probably arguably like one of the worst lands we could draw because now our other world gaze is not available. Probably going to put a stop regardless. We're just vampires. That's so sick. Um, yeah, let's just cast the other world of gaze here. Try to ensure we hit that land. When we find it. Draw. Figures I'll mill myself. I guess I could have milled them, but... Not uh, necessarily changes too much. It was roughly the same. Got to dodge a little bit of damage here. Basically, you have to dodge another Markov. We have 10 on the board exactly. Markov's lethal. Or two damage of any kind. Markov's exactly lethal. Took us too long to find it. Our lands were just slightly too painful. All right, we go first. We don't have to dig for the mending this game. I can just play. I don't think I play the archive first. Just barely maintaining our life total has been so important in these games. We can just go ahead and get the last land out of the way as well. With that. Oh snap. Y'all know this is my favorite matchup of all time. I love blue white control. A very locked out could probably go. Never mind, it's the mirror. <laughs> I was not ready for the mirror. All right, who is combo first? Smile. Pretty much the same plan. Realistically, the, depending what they play, it's like kind of automatic for me to win if I can hit, but those, so far, it's not looking very likely. Um, Founding's actually not that bad. Draw. I will not mill my opponent for sure. Well, would you look at that? Combos in the yard. We can kind of go for it here. I can look at three or I can mill four. He sets this on one, we do nothing. And the reason for that is now next turn, I won't get the land down anyway. They only have one piece of pie in there. So that's good, but they do have a mending. So if they have a rack those joins up, it's not like they can't do it. Or can you do it from your opponent's graveyard? Now I know what the card says. If they can rip it from mine, that'd be so insane. Uh, I'll have to choose regardless. Oh, I guess I didn't realize I had to choose. Forehand, I mean, that makes sense. Oh, decline. This is from your graveyard. So, we're here. We're ready. Well, opponent, do you have it? Put it in there and win. The other world he gave, so it tells me it's not in the hand. This is good. All right, they don't have it. Sweet. Look at that, chat. We're trying to game. They exile Faithful Mending. They're casting it too. Very cool. Look at this go. 
the mirror match. I feel like I've never ran into this deck on the ladder prior when like kind of a lot of people were posting about the deck list. But here we are. I think they have a counter spell chat. I'm going for it. I don't care if they have a counter spell or not. This doesn't matter, right? They have a counter spell. Most likely I'm getting dusted next turn. Let's look. They're still here, so it makes me feel like they do. Use the one from the graveyard. Or if they have a way to like flash in something to exile, which technically they could. Not at their mana cost though. You have a bounce spell? Destroy evil even? I get lost? Here. I would not like to copy a map, thank you. So main thing is, they still don't have the card in their yard. We'd love to see them tap out here. So we can go for it again, but... We have another hulking in the yard. We do, so we're actually kind of lucky with that. So we're just ready to do it again. Let's see it. Another get lost goes in the bin. You have one in the hand. Is it combat? There's pause here, but there's a pause for pretty much all these spells, so it's not necessarily the best. Here. Then. Go for it again. No oh, shot. Stop it, opponent. To be fair, I do have 18 power in play. My opponent's playing get lost and I'm not. And they put the third copy in the yard. Oh, they still didn't put one in. But they can play land faithful mini. <laughs> they can see. I'm not even an infinite damage deck. I'm just a big 9-9 nine -nine deck. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> Oh, dude, they just didn't find the other piece. I get it, opponent. I really, really do. When it was first, I have a way to discard this. I have a look and then untap mana for turns two and three. Yeah, seems pretty decent. And kind of like a lot of things going on. Is this the mirror again? What? Why is it the mirror again? I like never run into this deck and you're telling me that I'm running into it back to back? I mean... That's two in there. I said put it in your hand, dude. Like what, what, are, we making, what are we making a call about right now? Um... Realistically, we just go ahead and jam this as well. So we know on turn three, we can for sure put this in the yard. Now we can kind of com not combo, but like pop off next turn. Where if playing this and then have it cast the mending. My opponent might have a get loss and I'm scared. This one on one. Yes. Mending. Probably the revelry here. Turn. Revelry is good, and we do have less cards, but in this matchup, two mana draw cards not really where we want to be, I think. Well, 
What is this card chat? Who is this person? What have they done to me? What? What? Hey. Freezing place right now. Uh, bin all these. And the reason why is because we have a mill from the founding as well. We didn't draw it. It's in the yard. I think it's all in the yard, right? No, it's not. I have the Ractus joins up. I don't have the other card. Tough. It's a tough day. In turn. Dude, you are stunned forever. They have to like not have it, right? Yeah. It does have an alternate casting cost. That is for sure. And it is in there. Uh, the only problem is the other piece of your puzzle is currently in play. All right. How do we want to do this? Here? Yeah. All in the yard, I suppose. All in the yard, I suppose. Tough day. This is a super tough day. On. What is happening? This one. Target myself. Dude, I'm I'm over half my library looking for a four of. I th thought maybe I'm tripping. Maybe it's in there. It's not. I'm at 26 cards left in the deck. At some point, I hope they play Jason just mill me out. Yeah, it's fun. The alternate win condition that my opponent apparently has. See, listen, I'll take the same thing opponent, but can I get one in my yard? Okay. And their shields down again. Hey, look at you super glued together, you. I don't know if they'll have a spell that's like, oh, you can't do anything unless you pay or something. Uh, this one. Decline. Make sure we can pay two. And zero for a lot of things, maybe. This is here. I can't say what I played against is the mirror. But it was the mirror with a freeze in place first is my hand. Yeah, this hand's pretty sweet. You can look pretty quickly and try to find extra lands. And then we also have like the foundings to come in. Founding you technically want to play on turn three because then it works out the best for you. But until then it doesn't really matter. Maybe I'll get the rest, you know. Human? Not Boros. Oh, all those can, all those can go. I know I'm playing this guy next turn. Okay. Well, faithful mending. You want to show up? Oh, Lance. I'm not even asking him to draw them. I just, I'm 14 cards deep. Got two lands in play. I mean, there was a card to hit here. I have all the pieces of my puzzle, so I'll just mill my opponent. At this point, I'm trying to heighten my chances of drawing lands. So, we'll do that. Uh, discard this and this. Land on top, preferably untapped. Exactly what we want, and we pass. Man, I. Somebody take the combo away from me. They're super glued together. Just like that, Boros with a rather slow hand, I would say. It's like weird because argument would be like, well, it's not like just pure Boros, I guess. 
We've all played against this deck in best of one before. We know how crazy their early starts can be. But I mean, for us to come out and take it against Boros very quickly and easily is never normally a thing that we're kind of boasting about, you know? Put two of them on the stack, just ensure. I don't think there's any life gain shenanigans I have to worry about, but... Just like that, we take it against Boros Convoke. I would have a Boros pack of war leaders call. Because they didn't convoke anything. That's such a... They kept seven, right? That's such a slow start. I mean, realistically, I mean, you see an inspector come in on one. And his token be banned. This is like a best of three start. This is what it feels like to play against this in best of three a lot of times. Not best of one. Best of one, their hands typically feel much more curved out. But... Either way, we come away with the win, and I'll take it. Okay, team, so we're going to talk about the deck. If you haven't seen this list, it was talked about pretty often when the set dropped. It was the first video I dropped on the new set. Um, this deck list is cool. It's really fun. And weirdly enough, against aggro decks, to some extent, you're favored. Like, obviously, if you're on the draw and aggro does its aggro thing with, like, a slick shot or putting a Virtuoso in on two and then pumping it for lethal on three, yeah, you know, you might lose those games. And, honestly, you probably lose them playing any other deck, too, especially in best of one. But here we are. We played this deck again, and we've made some upgrades to it. And that is to add Sunset Revelry for our creature matchups and things like that. So we can add a couple of ones to Temporary Block. We saw how well that kind of panned out for us against a Mono Blue Ninjutsu deck. Or Mono Blue... Do you call it Mono Blue Ninjutsu or just Tempo in general? Well, it wouldn't be Tempo. But regardless, we were able to make some creatures. We gained some life and we drew a card. And then we have two lockdowns to help us if our opponent is like Boros and kind of help us ensure if we are ever on the draw in that matchup and our opponent does have a crazy good start, we have a card to kind of run into to slow them down by a lot. We don't make treasures. We don't have like maps and stuff for us to necessarily worry about in that spot. So this doesn't really stop anything. The only thing we really have to worry about is it hitting a founding in the third path, but... I will give up the founding to make sure I survive if temporary lockdown is that good in the matchup. But other than that, we are pretty much on the same kind of mill ourselves slash grab our combo piece as you would be in pretty much any deck. Like this, these kind of cards like Prankster and uh, Art the Archaeologist and Otherworldly Gaze is kind of what you'll see in pretty much any graveyard ramp style, not ramp, graveyard graveyard reanimator style deck because they are so good at putting cards in the graveyard and getting back the ones that you need in order to work along with founding the third path we can cast one of these for free and along with milling ourselves more and then exiling a card from the graveyard which a lot of times in those control matchups you want to set up being able to cast this like three or four times in a row and then force them to counter it every single time if you can so that's very important to do that but other than that, if you're not entirely sure why the combo works or maybe uh, like what the whole plan is, obviously you watch the whole video, you should know based on watching it. The reason it works is because Rakdos becomes a creature. This is an enchantment. It's actually not a creature, but this card converts it into a creature, so it makes this bottom text relevant. So this bottom text says whenever a legendary creature you control dies, Rakdos joins up dealing damage equal to that creature's power and toughness. When this comes into play, it can copy a creature or an artifact. Now we force Rakdos joins up to be a creature, so it's a legal target for this to copy. This comes in top copy and this Rakdos joins up, which makes it a legendary as well. And they'll both have the same name as Rakdos joins up. Therefore, we have to pick one to stay around. Therefore, we keep the original. And because another copy of this re-entered the battlefield, it will reanimate the same card back into play. And then we'll copy this infinitely. And it is stoppable by just not choosing to copy because this is a May ability. So you can stop at any point. So if your opponent has a million life, you can do a million damage and then stop it. So it's very, very cool in that retrospect. But outside of that, I hope you all enjoyed. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching and goodbye.